Hello there. First uh, video, we're going to show you some of the basic aseptic techniques that we use in microbiology. Uh, you'll get to practice these plenty in class, but we wanted to give you a little video that shows you the basic techniques. First thing I'm going to show you how to do is to use the inoculating loop, which is a very typical tool we use to move bacteria from either a culture uh, onto a plate, from a culture tube to another culture tube, from a plate to a plate, and there's a transfer of bacteria from one area to the other. Uh, most important thing is when you're using the loop it needs to be sterilized. There's a proper technique for sterilizing a loop which I'll show you right now. Uh, with the Bunsen burner going we're going to heat the loop starting up closer to the handle and slowly moving our way down to the end so that if there was any liquid here it would first evaporate and then burn off any of the bacteria versus aerosolize and potentially spread any of the bugs into the air. So put the loop in the flame, you'll see it will get red hot, slowly move it down the flame, which will kill off anything that's on it, and eventually ending with the loop, which will get red hot, particularly the first time you use it during the day, you don't know how where it's been, and once it is sterilized, you pull it out of the loop, now we need to let it cool off. Things to not do when you cool it off is don't blow on it, that won't help matters. Don't stick it into a beaker of cool water because the water won't be sterile. Basically, you have to let it cool off in the air, or we'll show you a technique later where you can touch it to a sterile area on a plate or on the condensation in the plate if you're in a rush. Okay, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to move some bacteria from this culture I have that I started yesterday of E. coli and do what is known as a streak plate onto this plate. Before we get started though, there's some important record keeping information we need to talk about, namely on every tube or on every plate you need to record four important pieces of information about uh, what's going to end up on the plate. Before you put anything in, you need to label the name of the organism, the type of media, in this case NA which stands for nutrient agar, initials of who did the, the work, the spreading, SDM, that's me, and the date at which the inoculation was made trying to keep it around the edge of the plate so that anything that's on the plate will be easier to, to see once they grow. Same kind of thing is done on a label, four corners, the bacterium, the date, the uh, investigator or the student, whoever it happens to be, and the type of media, uh, and if it's nutrient agar or nutrient broth, and you saying you have all those pieces of information. Important to make sure you get those all on there. So I'm going to move the bacteria that I have growing in overnight culture of E. coli. You can see in this culture tube, which has these lids on it that slide up and down. They don't screw on, which is going to be important because there is a technique which allows us to open and close these with minimal chance for contamination. And move it on to the plate, which most of you are familiar with, a Petri dish that has a lid on the top and has a nutrient agar on the bottom. It's stored inverted, and then we'll talk about that as we uh, show you how to do that. So, if you're right-handed, having an inoculating loop in your hand like this, not sort of grabbing it like this. It'll be a lot easier if you get used to holding it sort of like a pencil, particularly so you have these two pinkies available to open and close tubes, as you'll see in a moment. So first thing I'm going to want to do is sterilize the loop. I'm going to put in the flame, slowly bringing it down, and let it get hot. Now that's sterilized. As it's cooling, talk about how to open and close the lids. Since I'm right-handed, I'm going to use my pinky of the hand that has the inoculating loop literally to grab the lid thing you want to get it used to. Every time you open it, open, flame, flame, close. By flaming it, I'll show you what I say, I'll grab the lid, if I pull it straight off and then just run it through the flame, I can do the work I need to do, flame, and close the lid. The flaming heats the air above the liquid which causes it to expand and push out, which minimizes the chance for contamination. Never want to set the lids down. You always have them in your hand so that they've, these have all been through this the autoclave and everything started sterile, so you, you want to uh, minimize potential contamination. So my loop is cooled now. What I'm going to do is flame open, go in. It'll pick up a little loop of liquid, which you probably can't see. Flame closed. Now I can set this down if I want, since I'm uh, going to be doing a streak plate. I have a little area on the, uh, this divided into three sections. What I'm going to do is first flip the plate over and then spread starting at the top back and forth and back and forth to get down here to the middle and then I'll sterilize the loop and you see drag into it a little bit and try to spread it out. We're basically trying to spread the liquid out and, and eventually get isolated colonies. Again we don't want to take the lids off of these ever. We want to tip it and basically flip and tip. 
and we'll flip it, tip it, get in there, streak it, and then put it back down. So I'll flip it over, I'm going to tip it up, get in, let the loop run gently on the surface all the way to the middle here, close. Now I'm going to re-sterilize this. And once you've used it and you know there's nothing up on the, on the shaft of it, you can sort of go in quicker, get the loop. I'm going to turn the plate now 90 degrees, and I'm going to dip once into where I had left off before, and then streak into this quadrant, and then sterilize and do the same thing again. And again, just tipping it, go in here into where I had left off, go in here and spread it out, re-sterilize the loop. And I'll turn the plate again 90 degrees, and one last time I'm going to try to dip into the area where I just streaked and drag it out and dilute it even further into the last quadrant. The tip, go in here, streak it out, done. When you're done, sterilize the loop. This could now be set down and flip the plate. The plates always get flipped, stored this way, minimizes the chance of anything falling on the surface and contaminating it. So there is a way to move liquid from the culture to the plate. The next thing we were going to show you how to do is to prepare what's known as a slant. Here's a slant tube which has nutrient agar that was uh, autoclave sterilized and allowed to cool at an angle so that it has this slanted surface which provides a large surface area for the bacteria uh, and we use this when we do put them in deep storage or to keep long term uh, cultures in the fridge and some media is, that is uh, prepared on slants, citrate agar being one that you will learn about later. First thing I need to do is label this. Now here's, uh, I have a label prepared. Important thing with a slant because what we're going to ultimately try to do is streak the bacteria on this surface. If I put the label up here, it becomes very difficult to see. So you'll learn as from experience that the best place to label it is, is somewhere down at the bottom below which you're going to actually have the streak so that it won't be in the way when you're trying to get in there. The only difference between this tube, another difference between this tube and the culture tube we had is that it has a screw top on it. So it's a little different in opening it. The technique will be basically the same. Again, I'll have an inoculating loop in my right hand, because I'm right-handed. And I'm going to use my pinky or my ring finger to open the tubes. The difference here is that instead of pulling the tube off, what I'll do is grab the top. Now, you could try to unscrew it like a, a soda bottle or something, but it'd be too easy to drop the top. Uh, and then it, it becomes no longer sterile. So the trick that will sort of encourage you to get used to is hold the top, turn the tube, and you will be able to get to a point where you'll know that the top is off and is ready to, that you can easily pull the top off, flame open, do the work you need to do, put the top back on after you've flamed it closed, screw the top back in as opposed to trying to screw the top. Okay. So what I will do is move the bacteria from this nutrient broth into the slant tube, hoping to make sure to flame open and flame close each time. First thing I'll do is just sterilize the needle, the loop. And again, I have a, a culture tube. As you get better with this, you'll be able to hold both tubes in your hand at the same time uh, until you get comfortable with that. You can do it one at a time. So I'm going to flame open, do my work, flame closed. A loop full of liquid, flame closed. I can set this down now. I will again, uh, unscrew it. I can tell it's ready to go. Flame open, literally put loop in here and drag it across the surface carefully, pull it out, flame closed. And the last thing I need to do is remember to sterilize my inoculating loop so that I'm not going to contaminate the desk. All set.